This is the only recording template that you're ever gonna need. I'm not even joking right now. Let's dive into it. So off the bat, obviously, it looks a little different than Pro Tools, but the Pro Tools you're used to seeing. I have a custom UI setting that you can download in the description below. Once you download it and you wanna use it, you go ahead and get to that UI menu by clicking the Tracks tab right here, and then you click that drop down menu. Now, if you started off with something that looks a little bit like this, or this, or this, you would just click the drop down menu, import settings, and click that file that you downloaded. And then you get something like this. Your eyes will thank you. You're welcome. So first things first, we have our master fader. I do not add plugins to this track personally. I wait for my mix bus. Master faders to me are just for visual referencing of the meters, of course. Use your ears. The second track we have is our mix bus. So this is where I actually add my processing. If I wanna add a bus compressor or some type of saturation, this is where I will add those plugins. The next three tracks are my vocal buses. Pretty simple. All my main vocals are out here, all my double vocals are out here, and all my ad-lib vocals are out here. The following three tracks are composed of our production elements. So the first one is a folder where if you import stems, you can organize them all in this folder. The second track is a auxiliary track, also known as a bus track, for our production. So when you import those stems, make sure you route the output of the stems to this production track so you can easily manipulate volume, tone, or any type of processing from one track. The next track you're probably used to seeing is our beat track. This is where you will import the two track beat. So the MP3 file that you ripped from YouTube, the next track is our Vox track. This is an auxiliary bus for all the vocals. These three blue tracks up here all route to the yellow Vox track. I even left a little comment for y'all. The reason that I have it organized like this is because I like to see the volume of the beat and the vocals right next to each other. So if we go to the mix window, we'll get a nice little section where we can stare at all day. The next track I have is another folder, which is for whatever artist that we're recording. This includes a record track dedicated for all the recording. I use the drag and drop method. It's probably the best method to use if you wanna maximize speed and efficiency. Anytime you record something, you just drag it down to whatever track it will be. So let's say I've recorded a main vocal just now. Stop that, drag that on down to a main track. If it was a vocal, that should be an ad lib, drag it down to the ad lib track. If you actually want it to be a double and record the main track after, which I don't know why they would do that, drag it to the double track. Whatever fits your process. So yeah, there's four main vocals, one double track, a few ad lib tracks. Just duplicate them if you run out. Right click the name of it, scroll down to duplicate. It'll ask you how many you want. Select the number that'll knock you out. Doesn't matter to me. But I always start with this simplified number here because this is about the average that I would use for rap artists. Leave a comment below if you want me to drop a template for my R&B artists, where we do a lot of stacks and a lot of harmonies. Love it. And to finish things up, we have our sins folder, which entails all of our delays and reverbs, as well as an EFX bus that has all of the delays and reverb routed to it. So you can turn down all of your effects at once if you want to. Now, obviously this template has no plugins on it. I did that for a reason, don't hate me. Click either of these two videos pertaining to whichever plugin company that you want to deal with for this template. To the next one, guys, subscribe, like, and comment. See you later.